about Fay. Now I know what you're thinking. Why use Fay when Action Cable is just around the corner with the release of Rails 5? Well, I like to stick to the basics sometimes and sometimes revisit them to see how I did something in a previous application and how I'm going to plan something for a new application. And while I'm still using Fay in production on several different sites, I think it's useful to revisit this to see where can we make improvements to our code and our application. And this will be a two-part episode where I show you some of the front-end basics around a pub-sub messaging and web sockets. But then the next episode, I'll dive deeper into the back end, how to run Fay, how to integrate it into your application. So to give you an idea of what a pub sub is, so here we have two browsers, and whenever you click on one of the browsers, you'll see that a toast pops up on another browser. If we go to another page, you'll see that a toast pops up on the other clients, and it'll continue to do that. So this is an example where one of these is our client listening, or they have subscribed to a channel, and then the other page is a publish where when we visit one of these pages, it's sending a publish to the Fay server and that's being broadcasted to anyone who is subscribed to that channel. I'll post in the show notes a link to this application. It's just a very simple rack up for Fay. And you can start up your own Fay server for development purposes within your own environment. So here we're just requiring the Fay gem and thin which is going to act as our web server. Then in our config.ru, we have our phase server, where we're just, we had this uh, server auth class. We accept incoming messages, and then we broadcast outgoing messages. Notice on incoming messages, we do not want to accept from anyone the messages. We want it to come from our application, and we do that by passing a secret token. Now notice on the outgoing messages, we make sure that we clear out the auth token and then we send this back out to all of our subscribers on the channels. So here we're just loading up the adapter and mounting it and then we're adding in our class here and then we're running the Fay server. To start up the Fay server, all you have to do is go into the Fay directory, pass thin on the port 8080 and then start. This will start the application. If you go to that URL, you'll see that under the URI fay slash fayjs, we have our JS file that we'll include in our main application. And again, I'll cover this all in a separate episode showing you how you can more tightly integrate it into your application. And the first thing that you'll want to do is go into your layout file under app views layout and your application layout. And then you want to add in this line here where we're just adding in another JavaScript include tag, and then we're pointing it to that fay.js URI that we saw earlier. Under our assets, we can create the new Fay client. And from here, we can start subscribing to channels. So if we want to subscribe to the about section, we can call our variable fay.subscribe and pass in the channel that we want to subscribe to, and then evaluate the return, profile, and contact. So this is the basics to kind of get it working where you're subscribing to a channel. Now we have to look at publishing. I really don't like adding in a separate subscribe for each one of these. I like using something a little bit more dynamic and configurable. And we can do something like that by, if we have a div tag with a class called subscribe in our view, then we can subscribe to that view. Now doing something like this, you'll have a data channel that you're actually subscribing to. So in our profile view, we can have a content tag where we're calling it a class of subscribe. Then we're passing in a data channel. And in this case, I'm calling it profile. So now how do we publish our message? Well, in our pages controller, when we visit each one of these, you'll first notice I'm including this application helper, which we'll look at in a minute. On each one of the actions, I'm calling a message where this is the JavaScript that will be broadcasted to anyone subscribed to the channel about, profile, or contact. And here's the broadcast helper method. Now I want to give credit to this to Ryan Bates because he did write this and I am just borrowing it because it is pretty solid code. So do take note here on the ext auth token, this is where we're passing our secret token 
into the phase server. And then we're just making a simple HTTP post, posting our data to the server. Now, the last example I'd like to look at is let's say we had this hello world where we have multiple lines and we have some HTML, maybe we have some JavaScript or other stuff, but stuff that's gonna be backend rendered through our Rails application. So we want to t actually toast this out to anyone who is visiting our about page. Now to do that, we can call a toast render to string, call a partial, and then reference our partial here. Now if you do this, you will get an error because the publish does not like having a multiple string in the JavaScript when it's evaluated. So one handy little feature is you can call squish and this will just remove all the white spacing and then you can test out your application and you'll see that you are getting a successful hello world and the HTML is interpreted as well. And I'd like to finish up just by revisiting the controller. Notice that we are calling a render to string that is very similar to the render, except we can now have two different renders or redirects within our one action. Render to string will just create a string instance of the partial. Uh, another thing to note is if you do need to pass in when you are calling a partial like this variable, so for example, if you have a form in your view, you would typically have something like this where you're passing in your f variable that's going to be within your partial to the f variable defined within your action here. When you're using the render to string, if you need to pass in variables like you did here, you are gonna to have to wrap your variables around the locals. That's all for this episode. I appreciate you watching.